Hello, my name is Patrick Ryan and I'm an engineer here at Northrop Grumman and I'm going to be talking to you today about speed and maneuverability for your small boat design competition. The wonderful thing about these two parts of the um, competition is the calculations that you will do are not going to be judged. Uh, you are designing for speed and maneuverability to be competed against um, the other boats when you are a finalist, um, but you don't actually have to prepare these calculations to be judged when you turn in your designs. Speed is a pretty tough thing to calculate. In fact, when the Navy does new designs, they build a model, like pretty much the same scale that you're building here, to test it and measure what the, the drag is. That's how the that speed is calculated. You're not going to have the opportunity to do that. Um, there are new ways to calculate this with computers, and again, these are going to be beyond um, the tools that you have available and the time that you have available. So we're just going to give you some rules of thumb so that you can build a vessel that goes fast. First thing we want to talk about is length to beam ratio. Okay? This is the distance between the leading and trailing edge of your ship and its width. Okay? I brought along with me some statistics from some Navy vessels that would be of interest to you. The uh, Ticonderoga class cruiser has a length of 567 feet and it has a beam of 55 feet. So the length to beam ratio, if you divide these two, is equal to 10.3. So this is a long, slender ship. Okay? This, is the, this is a cruiser. I have statistics for a frigate. Its length is 445 feet. Its beam is 45 feet. So its length to beam ratio is 9.9. .9. Right. These are relatively fast vessels. The next one I'd like to talk about is the San Antonio class replenishment ship. Its length is 600 and 84 feet. Its beam is 105 feet. So its length to beam ratio is 6.5. As you can see, you can get a pretty wide range from about 6 to about 10. The guidance that we've given you in the, in the documents is to shoot between about 6 and about 8. Um, the longer and more slender your ship is, in general, the faster it's going to go. Okay. Another thing we'd like to talk about is block coefficient. We're going to talk about block coefficient some more when we talk about maneuverability, and you'll know how to calculate this from some of the other sections. But in general, the smaller that your block coefficient is, the faster your vessel is going to go. So if you wind up with a vessel with a block coefficient of about 0.9, that's going to be slower than a ship that has a block coefficient of 0.7. So when you do your trade-offs, you want to compare where your block coefficient is um, with respect to your previous iterations on your design. The smaller the block coefficient, the faster, in general, your vessel will be. In the design guidelines, we also talk about um, wetted surface area. This is basically the amount of steel that the water will come into contact with when your, your vessel is moving through the water. And just like rubbing anything together, water on steel has friction. And the more friction that you have, the slower you're going to go. So by minimizing the amount of wetted surface area you have, you will maximize your speed. The last thing um, that we have in the design guidelines is a discussion about abrupt changes in shape. Um, I want to put this on the board so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, uh, and this one's going to be a little more of a challenge for you given the constraints with no complex curvature. But you'll, you'll have to work this out. A ship that has a slender bow is going to draw half of the ship um, and some type of transom stern will perform better than something that has lots of sharp corners because you'll have additional drag sources at these corners. So in general, try and minimize your abrupt transitions uh, so that your boat is as streamlined as possible. Just think of uh, cars or other you know, fast planes, things that you've seen before. 
the general principle is, is pretty uh, readily apparent. Um, so I hope that gives you some good guidance when you're talking about or working on the design of the speed of your craft. And remember, no calculations are necessary, um, but you will be judged on speed head-to-head -head in the final race uh, next March. So good luck with your, your speed work.